Hi everybody and welcome to the latest episode of the Optics Warehouse podcast. Uh, obviously we've had a few good episodes so far and a few good responses from it, uh, so thank you very much for all those that have tuned in and subscribed. Uh, we are very appreciative of your obviously comments and obviously a few few emails that are coming through. But I'm saying, um, as always guys, any questions that you do have, please do feel free to to email us. All the details on, on the podcast listing, of course, we'll have a platform you're listening to. Um, so just um, get in contact with us. Any questions you want to ask, any topics you want to discuss, anything like that at all, uh, we're more than happy to uh, more than happy to cover it. So obviously in these early episodes, we have been um, talking to a few staff members, um, staff members here at Optics themselves. Obviously, we spoke to Adrian, we spoke to John. Uh, obviously, you all you know myself, my name's James. And um, today, we have uh, one of the chaps who works in marketing, who's actually progressing across to sales as well. Has a bit of a background uh, in shooting, uh, has worked in the gun trade before, all that sort of stuff. Um, his name is George. Um, thank you very much for coming on here today, George. That's all right. Um, I'll say it's some um, new um, new series of podcasts, this. It's... Um, Quite relatively, relatively up to date and keeping down with the kids, so to speak, um, <laughs> keeping in, keeping in touch with that sort of stuff. So I think it's it's a good opportunity for for everyone to understand um, some of the people that actually actually work for the company themselves. Um, so you've been with us, what is it, just just around sort of years time now? Yeah, isn't it? Well, um, yeah. yeah. So you enjoy yourself so far? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, don't know about progressing to sales. I think I'm more bringing you lot up to. Marketing. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's what you say. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we just um, just talk about obviously what your your currently your role currently here is at Optics, obviously. And, and so area. I make a lot of the listings for the website. So when you see, uh, especially all the pre-owned stuff, you know, I take all the pictures for them. So when you're looking at them, that's what I've done. Um, yeah, you know, writing descriptions and stuff like that. Uh, then, you know, like you said, going over to sales more. So I'm sometimes on the phones, chasing customers, that type of thing. Yeah, no, no, no fair enough. It's, um, I say it's, uh, it's obviously understandable, as I say, with the marketing department, and not necessarily everyone has that sort of shooting knowledge, so to speak. So obviously it's quite handy having someone in there that knows, knows the products um, quite well, so to speak, so they can actually put the proper mm. descriptions in, obviously all the photos, what works well for, works well for the website, etc. Um, so I mentioned before obviously you are a shooter yourself um, yep. talk about what sort of shooting you do well at the moment uh, air gun uh, hunting you know, pest control mm -hmm. or ratting rabbiting uh, stuff like that uh, previously I have shot quite a lot of different things <laughs> I've gone um, through being a member of a club and that well you know we all take a turn at the range type of thing so I've shot everything from 177 air gun to 50 cal muzzle oh, fantastic. loader. Yeah, yeah, so there's yeah. a quite a quite a broad range of yeah. that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, we had, they went through quite a few fads. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> one minute it was long barrel pistols, muzzle loading pistols. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, lever action cowboy guns. Oh, nice. Mili you know, surplus military stuff. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's quite a quite a range there of different different yeah. firearms you like to like to play with, etc. So it's um, as I say, you do a lot of, of air gunning at the moment and yeah. whatnot. Um, and I say it's and you've you've had a go with obviously the centre fire and fire rifles all that sort of stuff. I mean, is it? Um, am I correct in saying you you do you have a you have a firearms at the moment or no? Not? You don't. Okay, right. so, it's, so it's, I'm still sub twelve foot pound. Yeah, yeah. And it's civil. Yeah, no, fair enough. Is it something you'd, you'd maybe want to get in the future just to? Yeah, when well, I was a bit, you know a bit more set up and that possibly, yeah. but I still think I'd keep the sub twelve. I really yeah. enjoy them. No, no, yeah, fair enough. It's, it's, work. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something I've I've looked to do as well. So I do a lot of the, the foxes and deer stalking that sort of stuff, and I sometimes do get envious of seeing you guys just like sat in barns shooting like 30, 40 rats a night sort of thing. And it just does look like a lot of I, I shouldn't say a lot of fun, obviously, because you're there to do a job at the end yeah, of the day. But it is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, the, the way I go shooting a lot with my dad, and the way he describes like ratting, it's mini stalking. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's. Yeah, okay, it's not as glamorous as being out after your deer or whatever. Yeah. But oh there's one and boom. Yeah. And you get that you know, that sort of little yeah, yeah. excitement. Yeah, type enough, of fair thing. enough. No, yeah. so it's, it's it's interesting to say it's, it's it's something I wanted to get into myself because it's obviously not had the opportunity to yet, but it's um no, it looks like looks like a lot of fun and it's obviously it's um it's it's going more and more prolific and it's especially with obviously Say like um, night vision and thermal becoming cheaper as well. Yeah. I think there's the the options there for a lot more people to to use it, become more covert and more efficient with the actual. Yeah, it does make a lot of difference. Yeah. Like vamping them, it 
doable. Yeah. But you've got to be very quick. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty little buggers, aren't they? So it's um so um obviously talk about the sort of the night vision and the thermal gear, obviously it's I'm being a bit biased towards that sort of stuff for obvious reasons, but it's um the stuff at the moment, obviously you've been able to have the opportunity to use stuff on demo. Um, I think you've got like two or three different units you're gonna play with at the moment. What what are you finding works works well with your setup? Um, for me, the best one I've used so far is the Owl and the ninety. Okay. Yeah. The the it's the screen on top. Yeah. The when when it's when you watch the footage back from it from the computer, it looks like nothing special but yeah. when it's compressed onto that screen yes. I think it's like a 4 or 5 inch screen on yeah. top it, it's crystal clear and yeah. you can see for hundreds of metres like it would be fine for anything else yeah. but it focuses in nice and clear in the short distances it's not just made for no. like centre fire users yeah, and yeah. Like, it's just literally clip on point shoot yeah, yeah. so well, simple it's, I think it's um well, it shows Tesla really. Obviously, when nights are when they're around um, before yeah. sort of COVID and whatnot, they were the brand to go for for air yeah. shoes, weren't they? So it's essentially an upgraded version of yeah. a night sight. Yeah. Um, again, so my dad has a night sight. What was it? Wolf. Yeah. The, the middle one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, Wolf. Yeah. And I reckon the MV90 is better than. That. Okay, well, that's interesting to say. As I say, the only thing I'd say. Obviously, the the so, so the N the N nine is against its side is obviously the fact it's got quite a long long tube yeah. on the back. Yeah, I wouldn't want to put it on anything that recoils heavily. No, no, that's it. So um, it's just obviously maybe not necessarily get that cheap weld. Yeah, and all that so well, maybe put it with a scout scope. Yeah, I can't, I can't that's it. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, maybe it's serious to try. Let's like, stick it with like a small prism scope, scout scope, something mm. like that. But maybe it'll be one of the immersives, like a five to thirty or something like that. I'm like, yeah, well, probably well, yeah. Well, yeah, and it allows you to get that decent eye release. So it's, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's something that's always put me off having a screen and camera on the back because yeah, they're not yes. for everyone, and um, you know it's you hold it dif you hold the rifle and set up completely differently mm. because obviously you've not got your cheek on your cheek yeah. piece looking down the scope, yeah. you've got your head up looking yeah. at a screen. So um, you know if you're shooting off sticks, bipod, whatever, yeah. like it's Makes it a lot easier. Yeah, but yeah, it's horses for courses, isn't it? That's yeah, right. no, absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's as, as you said earlier. I think it's also the the recoil factor as well. Obviously, an air yeah. gun, especially like a PCP, where there's like basically no recoil at all. Yeah, it's, it's there. You don't necessarily if, it's, if you've got it set up steady, you don't necessarily have to put it into your shoulder that well, do yeah. you? To to get yeah, so, if you're, you know, yeah. I went out to get some footage with one and using the bog death grip. It's just like yeah. it's a portable TV, really. Yeah, no, fair <laughs> oh, there's a rat bonk. Yeah, no, no, fair enough. I'll say it's um, so I can imagine if I went that on my two seventy, I might have a few issues. Yeah, that, so, so. yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's interesting, obviously, to, to hear hear what you think is um think is best, and obviously, say we there's a there's a range of thermals out there at the moment. Um, I mean. I mean, how much do you think as a rat shooter? I mean, let's take the hip range for example. You've got like the LCO six, which starts at sort of three seventy up to the um, LH nineteen up to eleven hundred quid. I mean, do you think you need to go up to eleven hundred quid just to to get that sort of? I think if you're if you just want to be able to go, oh, that there's some rats over there, yeah, type of thing. You don't need to be, and you're doing it fairly close under that hundred meters type of thing. Yeah, I don't think you need to go right up to that high end. Okay, you know. Um, the more budget middle, yeah, so something like the ten or than fifteen mil, something like that. Yeah, 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 especially ten, probably the ten mil over the six. Yeah, um, just because it gives you a little bit better picture. Yeah, and that, that yeah, they, okay. they, you know, they do make a difference being able to, yeah. know, without especially you know, say using things like with the screens on top. Yes, you can spot them without lighting your face up. Yeah, which yeah. does help. No, that's good. And you've obviously, if you had a go with the the thermals there to have a tell a chance to have a play with them. I've, I've had a little play. Yeah. And um, so I'm not really tested them like seriously. Yeah. Just yeah. Okay. Literally, you know, looking through them a lot, seeing how far I can see. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's fair enough. Um, I say, what do you um, what are your thoughts? Obviously, uh, I think it's a bit easier with. With maybe close range shooting or rat shooting, obviously to use a thermal weapon scope instead. Like obviously, there's the big thing with fox shooters is the identification of the fox at yeah. 200 yards. I mean, with a rat, I mean I've not seen that many rats with thermal, so I can't comment too much on it. But as far as I'm aware, it's like a small sort of blob, really, and it just you know that there's going to be rats in there. Yeah, um, just, uh, for 
for that side of it, if you know, for actually shooting them like on the air gun or whatever weapon you're mm. using, I would probably still stick to night vision. Okay. Uh, just because again, you've like as you said, you've got that clearer identification. Okay. Yeah. And you know, it's shooting, you need to be safe. And yeah, no, absolutely. You need to know exactly what you're shooting absolutely. at. No, absolutely, mate. Um, I'm just going to backtrack slightly, especially to ask you sort of questions earlier on. Obviously, you said you've, um, you've been in the trade before, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, and was that just a local shop down the road, or is it? Uh, yeah, it was um, over in Heathfield. Yeah? Okay. Shop. Okay, and how long were you, how long were you there for? Oh, <laughs> a little while ago, so uh, um, I want to say three years. Okay. I think. Yeah, and is that, is that predominantly an air gun based? Yeah, they're, they're mostly air gun. Um, we had our own indoor 20 metre range as well, yeah. um, which that was pretty good. But we did get you know, shotguns and yeah. other bits in as well. Yeah, so. no, fair enough. I so say it's, um, I suppose I'm going to just come to it. I mean, obviously, if you were to have the opportunity, would you do obviously sort of centre fire shooting and all that sort of stuff? Oh, yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, for, you know, money was no object. Yeah, <laughs> I'd turn into an American gun nut, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'd have a room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you would, yeah, no, I'd fucking a bit emphasize that. Yeah, it's something I'd certainly do. <laughs> Um, so obviously just um, based on what you said I think I've pretty much worked out that obviously if you were to, to have your, your personal best ratting setup, it would be the Allen 9 and, and sort of like a hit 10 mil or something like that just so. yeah, well from personal best I would probably put like a pulse ask on <laughs> right, okay. just because you know if money's no object yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's completely different yeah that's exactly so that's um, what the C50 it is a it is a very versatile piece of kit so yeah, no, yeah. I understand I've seen a few people rat shooting with it as well yeah. but I was just say it's just, just trying to keep it within a sort of budget friendly thing because obviously yeah. if people are buying an air gun then they haven't necessarily one they may not have the license and two they just want to go for something just to shoot for your rats so well, the average PCPs one, or what, like five, six hundred quid, or is it a little bit more than that? I just don't know. Um, you know yeah, you would be able to get a decent setup for around that. Yeah. You know, you obviously second hand. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, various deals. It, it yeah. all depends on what you want. Yeah. And you know how much other equipment you want to buy yeah. with it. You know, are you going to buy a charging tank? Yeah. Pump? yeah. Yeah. Or are you going to, you know, use a springer? Yeah. yeah. Not need any of that. No, no, that's just, uh, I suppose actually, uh, one last question. Sorry, I know I've kept you in here a while. So one, last, right. one last question, really. So obviously, uh, I'm guessing you've used the range of springers and PCPs. Obviously, yep. as we all know, John is a uh, big fan of his springers. So obviously, he's just done believers, um, springers, etc. Um, I mean, for a hunting point of view, do you think PCP is the best way to go, go about it? Or... From a purely practical standpoint, yeah, yeah, PCP, yeah, you've got multi shot, yeah. um, you know, 10, 40 round magazine, whatever it is, yeah, yeah, and you know, it's as quick as you can work the action, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so things like ratting, yeah, or you know, where it's, where it's the dot coming out, from yeah, yeah. Work whenever, and that they are wickedly good, no, of course. um, and then also you can make them, you know, basic moderator. Mm. Um, they'll whisper quiet yeah, no, um, but there is a certain appeal to a spring yeah. gun yeah there's that sort of um, extra layer of challenge yeah yeah so you, you see you want to obviously have to get from a run in the dark get it all sorted out all that sort of stuff yeah like yeah. yeah no that's that's just a fair comment I mean and that's just the other question really goes, or I'm guessing gets asked quite a lot throughout the Ego market is 177 or 22 two, and why would you why would you choose if you were going to choose one to do everything one seven seven. Yeah, um, I think that's the best all rounder. Um, if you can have the option of saying having maybe a second gun and you're only shooting say rats up close, yeah, then yeah, have a two two. Yeah, um, yeah, that extra knockdown power. Yeah, you, yeah. you cannot, regardless of whether it's speed or whatever, weight and mass. Mm. Just you can't place them. No, no, no. Fair for, enough. Um, knocking things down uh, but for an overall yeah 177 yeah. It's, that fatter trajectory makes it easier to learn yeah it's easier to judge um, I mean I think the old adage was always 177 for feather and 22 for fur yeah you know yeah. Um, and I think there is a some truth in that yeah yeah um, especially with now you know people bring out more and more uh, lead free pellets with yeah possible ban on the horizon <laughs> yeah I think it's tell me about it yeah 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's um, it'll be interesting to see where the uh, where the uh, the shooting industry is in a few years' time. But um, yeah, but no, um, sort of it's not gone. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, hopefully not. No, um, but no, George, thank you very much for coming in today. Great pleasure. Obviously, it's been great to get an insight as to what you do here, do here with the company, what you do outside the company, all that sort of stuff. Um, as always guys thank you for tuning in uh, on whatever platform you're listening to please don't forget obviously, to like and subscribe uh, always email us in as many questions as you can we are collecting together a few questions and what we'll do is we'll go through a few emails uh, we'll answer the questions and we'll uh, see how um, see, um, we'll see, make sure you, you guys get the right answers for the questions you need out there on the market but guys uh, that's been the latest episode from the Optics Warehouse podcast um, we hope to see you soon thank you very much bye